Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz, and welcome to episode two of our replay of the Battle of Agincourt from the Men of Iron Tri-Pack, the 2019 game from GMT Games. Now, when we last left, at the end of episode one, the French archers had seized the activation and are poised to take what could be potentially deadly shots at King Henry V. Now, if Henry falls, the battle and the momentum could shift to the French's favor. But so far, the battle has not been favorable to the French. Their attacks have been repulsed by the deadly English line of longbows. Let's jump right into the action and see how things get on. A quick recap of episode one. So the French forces in blue are massed on the north side of the battlefield. The English are in red on the west, on the south side of the battlefield. And in episode one, the rough plan was to have Orleans's battle here make way for some of the archers to get some archers up, these units in yellow, we can see here, and try to pepper some holes in the English line, then have Orleans battle charge through and break through the English line. Now you can see obviously that didn't happen. The French men at arms and the archers got kind of tangled up and then we kind of rushed the men at arms charge over here on the west side of the battle and that was firmly repulsed by the English units. However, now as we begin episode two, the French archers were able to, able to maintain activation. We have a couple of full strength archer units that could get some shots off here at King Henry's men at arms who are already disordered. That could put a crack in the English line, a badly needed crack for the French. Also, I was thinking a little bit about this and Stuart All mentioned, mentioned a comment on the video that got me thinking that archers don't need to be in command to fire. So I think we might try to slip one or two of these archer units on the west side of the battle over here to try to slip them behind the English lines. At the very least, it will force the English to thin their lines to try to cover that flank. So let's dig into episode two and get started. So let's start over here on the west edge of the map by threatening the English left flank here, this west flank. We're gonna move these crossbowmen into the woods at three, the road and clear, which is one at four, and then five, and then face them back towards the English lines here. Now their line of sight is blocked by these woods and the village of Agincourt, but uh, that will put them in a nice position to move on in the next turn, and we'll have to see how the English will respond to this. We're gonna have this crossbow unit fire across at the archers here. Now, it's a range of two, which is zero to the crossbow. However, the British English crossbow, English longbow unit is in the woods, so they will have minus one. This unit is disordered, that's a further minus one. And then, although they can fire, it, uh, take advantage of this clear hex because their line of sight is right along the spine. I believe this is gonna mean they have to fire over their own units to get at them, which is raining fire. So we're gonna have a die roll that is minus three to it. And let's see what kind of result we get. Firing one, uh, not a very good shot. That has no effect on the longbows. However, the longbows can now return fire as reaction fire. At a range of two, their modifier is plus one. They will, I assume, have to rain fire over this intervening unit as well. So it's going to be two, uh, plus one to zero because it's a minus one penalty for that. And then into the woods is minus one. Now this crossbow unit is disordered. So that makes a little bit of a difference. Let's see how the English longbows can do. They had by and large abysmal rolls in the first battle. A nine, they are making up for it now. A nine at minus one is eliminated and the French have lost their first unit. That's a big loss for them. Let's remove this from the game and adjust the flight point track. Now the archers are worth two points on the flight point track. So that gives the English uh, two points of flight point damage on the French. And we have drawn our first casualties of the battle. Let's slide here to the middle of the battle and have our first French archer unit take its shot at the, at the men of arms of King Henry who are already disordered. Now this is a big chance for the French because if they could take out this unit, that would put the first hole in the English line. At a range of two, dice modifier is a zero and there's no other factors that come into effect. However, we're attacking on the, firing on the disordered chart. So here the French archers, French archers notch their bows and fire. Oh goodness, a two. Rather dismal result, but it still results in a retreat for the English forces. So Henry and his dismounted men, his, mounted, his, his men at arms here, whoops, will explode. And we're gonna push them back here, away from the battle. It does punch a line 
in the English forces, but doesn't get quite the damage we were hoping for, and that unit's fired. Okay, let's move on to the next units here. I think what we're going to try to do is to have this archers slide to the east here, and then let's see if we can... It's a, it's a dangerous shot because these can return fire, but I think we have to try to punch a little bigger hole here. So these archers are going to fire now on this longbow unit. At a range of two, that makes the modifier a zero, and there is no other modifiers involved here. So the archers fire, get a three, which is no effect. God, it's the French archers' turn to have no effect in battle. The longbows will return fire at a range of two, their dice roll modifier is a plus one. They're a little bit better than the archers. And the English one goes fire, they get a five, which is disordered. So the French units here not having the best start to what promised to be a rather advantageous uh, advantage in having a reactivation. But we're not done yet. We're going to move these archers from the back here, the crossbows. They can move here at a one, two, three, four, and fill that gap. And they're going to take a shot at the longbows as well. Now, at this range, the archers as well, the crossbows have a plus zero modifier, like the archers do. So, rolling with no dice roll modifications on the longbows, six, you get a disordered. A good result on the longbows. The longbows will return fire now. They get to fire at the undisordered state because the fire happens simultaneously. So, the longbows are going to fire. They have a plus one modifier to their dice roll. They fire and get zero. Gosh, <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe it's raining or something. I'm not really sure what's going on here. But no effect for the longbows to fire. Now, they have fired as well. We have one disordered unit left here. So these guys fired as well. We have one disordered unit is left down here that these archers on the end. Let's have them take a short shot at Edward of York here and see if they can get some kind of a result. Firing at range two, there's a zero dice roll modifier. However, they're disordered, so it is minus one. They let loose, get four, minus one is a three. No effect. Gosh, okay, the, and they do not get a return shot because they are men at arms here. Now the last thing we'll do, we'll have uh, David de Rambores pull forward here. He can move five up there into that gap. And that ends the French activation. Now we're going to see if the French can hold the activation again. We're going to try to activate Orleans Battle. His activation rating is a 3. However, the French have had two successful activate reactivations already. So we add 2 to the dice roll, meaning that Charles needs a 0 or a 1 for the French to hold their activation. A 7. He fails. The activation will now switch to the English. So the English have two problems to solve. First is this crossbow unit that the French are trying to sneak by on the left flank here. The second is the are these two disordered units in the hole that these archers and men at arms have punched in the English line. We're going to start by using having longbows react to this, however, because I think this is the greater threat. And we'll also get a shot or two off at some of these uh, disordered men at arms, so we might be able to take them out of the picture. Lastly, Henry has an activation of six, where Thomas has an activation of three, so it's much more likely that we can go one, two, than we can one, two. So let's get started with Thomas's battle activating down here on the west flank of the English line. I was debating whether to have the longbows stop here and wait for the crossbows to move in so the longbows could shoot first. But in the end, I think we want to keep the, long, the crossbows out of cover. So we're going to pull the longbows in three, five, and have them immediately face a return fire from the crossbows. Now the crossbows have a, a plus two at range zero. So we're going to add two to the die roll. However, the longbows are in Agincourt, so that's minus one. So it's a shot at plus one on, their, on the longbows. And that will count. Get a nine, which is a ten. So the longbows are disordered. And now they will get a chance to make their shot at the crossbows. At range zero, the longbows are a plus two. However, they're now disordered, so minus one to the shot. So let's come over and take that shot. Zero. God, that's like the worst results we could hope for on the English side. So uh, that's a bummer. Let's shuffle to the next unit over here. These longbows at the edge of the woods behind their stakes are going to fire on the disordered mounted men, the disordered men at arms standing in the open. So it's a plus two, and we're looking on the disordered results chart. That's a six, which is a retire. Plus two, sorry, is an eight, which is eliminated. Nice for the shot for the English. The dismounted men at arms is eliminated, and this will add to the flight point track. 
A dismounted men of arms is worth three flight points, giving the English five flight points on the French track right now. So starting to pile up, but still a long way to go to that 30 they need for the act for the victory. Next up, let's move to this longbow. The, the men at arms are just gonna stay where they are. The longbow firing on these uh, men of arms of the French of Charles's battle, it's a plus two on the shot. Let's see how they do. A seven, that's a disordered. So this moves to disordered status and that will finish the activation for Thomas's battle. Now we're gonna roll to see if we can activate Henry's battle. Henry needs a zero to six, it's a first activation. So that's a straight up roll. Zero to six for Henry, they get a two. That's perfect for the English. So the first thing that Henry's battle will do, this longbow is gonna fire at a range of two at the men of arms who've just been disordered by this longbow unit. So they are rolling and they get a plus two, but it, a plus one at range two, that's it, straight up. But they're firing on the disordered chart here. Four plus one gives us a five, which means that this unit is retired. So just to show how this works, when a, retired, when a unit is retired, it's immediately moved back to either the square that has the standard on it or the square next to it that has the standard on it. And then we drop this retired marker on it. So the French will not, there's a special activation they can do to be able to get that back into action. But that's a pretty good start for the English longbows of Henry V. With the disordered longbows and the disordered men at arms, we're just gonna have them stand still and not do anything. And that means that this activation ends and by the longbow and the men at arms not doing anything, they come back out of disordered status and come back to full status. So it's completely undone, if you would, the French attacks earlier in the battle. So that's a good move for Henry. Now it's time for the English to try their second continuous activation. We're gonna to try to continue the English activation with Edward of York and his longbowmen here on the, the east side of the battlefield. And to continue their activation, they will need a zero to four. However, the English have had one successful activation already, which means that we add one to the die roll. However, King Henry is in range as well, so it subtracts one. So we end up with a zero to four for Duke Edward Duke. A seven, it's unsuccessful, and the activation will transfer over to the French. Okay, I think we have a plan for the French. We're gonna start with David de Rambouillet's archers. We're gonna see if they can move around a little bit to open up a hole here through which the next battle, Charles's battle, could charge. But in the meantime, see if we can weaken these positions here because we've got this opportunity, this gap right here is the French to maybe try to take advantage of. So we're gonna start with uh, Rambouillet's battle and we'll get them going. All right, to create a firing, a, a movement pathway, we're gonna to try to move these crossbows out of the way by starting out by moving these archers out of the battle a little bit. They'll be out of range of anything. They can't fire at these longbows because the woods block their way. We're gonna move this second group of archers a little bit to the east and have them fire on Edward of York's troops here. Now, this shot will be at minus one because the range is two and yet they are disordered so there's a minus one penalty to them. The archers aim seven. Seven minus one is a six which results in the Edward of York's mounted men of arms becoming disordered. A nice shot for the French to start out. Next, we're going to do similarly here, except we're gonna move these crossbowmen a little bit to the east, and they're gonna to try to fire now at the archers. If they could disorder the archers and get a favorable, resu favorable result on them, that could further open up the hole in here. So the crossbowmen firing at a range of two have a dice roll modifier of zero. They're behind the stakes, but that doesn't matter for firing, so they are going to simply fire away. Here we go, no dice roll modification. Two, no effect. And the longbows get to return fire. Firing at range two, longbows have a dice roll modifier of plus one. Firing uphill, but that does not matter for this. Shot gets away, six. Disorder the Genoese crossbowmen. So not a favorable result for the French there. They exchange shots and the crossbows become disordered. Next up, let's take that same shot except with these archers further to the west here. We're gonna have the last of Rambouillet's archers fire at the longbows here in the open. They need, uh, they get a zero modifier at range two. Shot gets off zero. Ah, that's a terrible roll for the French. Their arrows take no effect and once again, the longbows will return fire at plus one. Four is no effect on the longbows either. So need, oh, plus one, sorry. Four plus one is a five, which is disordered. So the longbows by benefit 
of their superior fire accuracy get plus one and they disorder the French archers. Not a great result. The only thing that's amounted from that is Edward of York over here having his mounted men of arms being disordered. We have one last archery attack covered by this battle and this is the crossbows way to the west edge of the map. They've already disordered the English longbows. They can fire at a plus two normally but because the crossbows are in the, the village of Agincourt here they get minus one so it's plus one to the dice roll. They get a seven on a disorder with a plus one that's eliminated so these archers are going to be wiped out. Now the longbows, however, before they're wiped out, they get a shot back at the French because the, the firing, the reaction fire happens at the same, the return fire happens at the same time. Longbows at a range of one are plus two. This unit, however, is disordered, so it's going to be plus one. Zero plus one is a one. No effect, and we remove this unit. The French archers have broken through the English lines on the edge, and they should be able to the next move, be able to come in from behind here. The English will have to respond to this, but this is a big opening for the French. I think it's time to see if uh, Charles's battle here can break through this hole here and perhaps take advantage of this slight weakening in the English line. So we're gonna try to activate Charles's battle here. Now, he needs a zero to three. It's his first activation. So a zero to three will keep the French activation. A five, they fail. So the activation shifts to the English. They'll get a chance to address the breakthrough on the west edge of their line, as well as perhaps open up fire on some of these archer units or other French units. Much as I hate to give up on some of the opportune targets up here, I think we have to address the crossbow sneaking in behind our line. So we're going to have Thomas's battle activate first for the English. To respond to the threat here, we're going to move these longbowmen back one into the woods here, have them turn to face the oncoming charge here for the crossbowmen. That will prevent them from sneaking through the town of Agincourt and getting behind the English lines. Next, to somewhat plug this gap over here, we're gonna shift these longbows, one, two, three, four, and they're gonna fire at their most opportune target, which is these unhorsed men of arms here. So at a range of two, that longbows get a plus one to their modifier, and there's no other modifiers in effect here. So firing at them with plus two, plus one, three, plus one is four. A disordered unit is forced to retire on a roll of four. So we will take these unhorsed men and bring them back to their standard. We'll tag them with the retired marker. We'll add one more flight point to the French flight point tally, which gives them a total of seven to the English one. The English lost one for those longbows that they lost earlier. It's only worth one point for the French. We are going to do nothing with Thomas's men at arms. We're going to have them stationed there. And then to try to plug this gap, we're going to activate Henry's battle here. Now, Henry normally needs a, uh, his, his first activation, he needs a zero to six to activate. That's a straight up roll. An eight, that's very unfortunate for the English. The French will once again get a chance to attack. The English unable to command the battlefield here. Debating whether to have the archers try to get off one more shot, but they've been ineffective. I think this, the scene here is poised for the for Charles's battle, his men at arms to charge forward and surge forward to see if they can break a hole, especially where this English line is weak. So we're going to activate Charles's battle and get busy moving everybody. First up, let's, uh, simple moves here. We're going to move these men at arms forward one, and that will position them two squares away. They're going to be able to, to designate a charge attack on York's men straight across this area and down the hill. We're also going to have these mounted men of arms. Let's go two, three onto the road, and four right here. They'll immediately draw some return fire from the longbows. The longbows firing at range zero have a plus two modifier. It's more than likely that these units are gonna be disordered. A three plus two is a five. They just get them. So they're disordered in their charge, but they are positioned next to the longbows and should be able to get off a shock attack in the next turn. We will move forward here with the dismount, with the, the men at arms, a three and then a four. They can go onto the road there. So they're poised for battle. Over here, a little bit to the south, we can start to just shift a little bit here. We can, this unit's already disordered, so they can't really move that far. Debating what to do here, whether to move them here or they can't get there. Uh, we're just going to have them move forward and hopefully they can fill in a gap if they can later. We're going to have Charles's battle, Charles and his men at arms, surge forward right here and try to take out 
try to take on Thomas's men of arms in straight up combat. Now, there is no reaction fire from longbows because the longbows gave up the position and moved over here. So the French get to take that position pretty easily. Now it's time for us to designate the various attacks that we have. Let's talk about what we'll be doing for this next round. Pretty straightforward. These men at arms, mounted men at arms, are going to charge forward here straight at uh, York's men at arms. The other two units that are in the front line, this disordered men at arms, are going to shock attack these archers. And then the other mounted men of arms over here, with under Charles's command, are going to attack on Thomas de Cambre, Thomas de Camoy. So the French have three potential attacks here. The very first thing we have to do is to resolve this charge up here. So let's start with that. So the first thing we do is resolve the movement on charge attacks. This is going to be straight forward here, right at York's men of arms here. Now the longbows do get reaction fire, and this could be deadly on the horses as they close in. The attack is at a plus two with the dice roll modifier. Shooting at the horses and the mounted men of arms, seven plus two is a nine which on this case unhorses the mounted men of arms. So immediately they're going to lose their charge marker. That will be replaced with a shock attack. We're gonna take this counter out. The mounted men of arms goes away. And now we get the unhorsed men at arms, replacing them. And as part of that unhorsing, they are disordered. So the French charge attack that doesn't come off as planned as these longbows make them pay a dear price chopping out the horses from under and leaving a kind of dis distangled rabble here. However, the French will have three shock attacks, including the ones here by the unit that's been dismounted. So we'll drop a shock marker on that unit to designate that. And let's get busy resolving the shock attacks. Let's start with our men at arms here under Charles to attack Thomas's men at arms. Now the only dice roll modifier that comes into play is the minus two on the unit. So we'll roll straight up and subtract two. Because six minus two is a four. That is no result. The units stay exactly where they are. So that comes to no avail. However, the French have some men at arms right in front of the English line and in position. Remove that shock attack marker and let's go to the next battle. Next up, let's try these men at arms against the longbows. They actually have some positive modifiers. Uh, men at arms against longbows add two. This is a plus one giving us a plus three. But these deadly stakes are minus three and the units disordered. So minus two on the die roll. <laughs> Zero minus two is not a good result for our attackers here. Against undisordered minus two is attacker disordered retreat one hex. There's no penalty for a disordered attacker to be further disordered. However, we have to retreat this unit one square. The only place they can go is back here. Notice, however, that now they've blocked off the retreat path for these unhorsed uh, men at arms, which could be a problem for this next attack. Let's do the last French attack here, which is these uh, unhorsed men-at-arms uh, against the men-of-arms here of Edward of York. Uh, the dice roll modifiers add up to a minus four, minus one for the unit, minus one for the matchup, and then minus two more because the attacker is disordered. So subtracting four from the die roll, this isn't a great result. Five minus four is a one. A one is attacker disordered, actually. Oh, that's not bad. I thought they would have to retreat. But they don't have to retreat, so they can hold their positions, which is good because if they had to retreat here, it would have forced them to either be eliminated because they don't have a path to retreat, or they could have trampled through these archers and taken one extra hex, which would have retired these archers and which by rules of the scenario would have eliminated them. So if they had to have retreated, it would have resulted in one of these units being destroyed, so they don't have to do that. So at the end of that attack, the French have not made much penetration into the English lines, but surprisingly, they didn't suffer that bad of a, a casualty rate there. So let's continue on with their activation here. It's worth noting that as we go to the, uh, the end of this first activation by the French, this is where we make a loss check in the game. But the French flight point total, flight point total is only seven. And if we add a nine to that, it's 16, which is still well below the 30 they need to lose the battle. And the English are only at one point for that lost longbow unit. And they don't have a dice roll added to this, so they're still far away from the 14. So there's no need to make the dice roll loss check right now. Instead, we're going to go right into the French trying to continue their activation. I do think we want to see if we can get the archers going again. So we're going to have David, who has an activation rating of three, try to continue his activation. It is a three, so the French will continue and the archers can take some shots. Let's uh, continue to see if we can push the, the luck here of the Genoese crossbows that have had so much success on the west end of the battle. 
They're going to storm into the town of Agincourt and try to fire on these longbows in the wood, but the woods. But the longbows will get reaction fire before that can happen because they've moved adjacent to them. The longbows at a range of one are plus two. The crossbows are in the town, however, so we're going to subtract one from that die roll, making it a plus one on the battle. Two plus one is a three. No effect. Again, the crossbows have gotten lucky here and managed to draw next to some enemy units without taking any damage. These crossbows are quickly becoming the star of the battle here. They'll get a chance now to fire. At range one, the crossbows have a plus two modifier as well. The longbows are in the woods, so we're going to subtract one from that die roll. So plus one from these crossbows firing on the longbows. Eight plus one is a nine. The longbows are disordered, and these crossbows continue their merry way through the town of Agincourt, threatening single-handedly breaking down the left flank of the English line. Let's move now to the center of the battlefield. We're going to start with these disordered French archers to try to take a shot at the longbows. The odds are against them here, but I feel like they haven't had so many casualties yet, and they're not going to do anything better with these archers, so they might as well fire. So at a range of two, the archers have a zero dice roll modifier. They are minus one because they're disordered, and that's it. So minus one on the dice roll. Three minus one is a two, which is no effect. The English longbows get a chance to return fire at a range of two. The English longbows are a plus one, and that's the only modifier on their roll. They get a five plus one on a disordered unit is a retire, and the French archers cannot be retired. A retire for them is the equivalent to elimination. So we're going to remove the French or archers from the battle and add two more points to the English, uh, the French flight track. So that gives them a nine. So not a great start here for the French firing on their turn. Next up, however, we get some better attacks for the French. These Genoese crossbows are going to fire at the disordered men of arms and they will not be returning fire because they're not archers. So at a range of two, the dice roll modifier for crossbows is a zero and the uh, they are disordered, so it will be minus one, but those are the only modifiers that come into play here. A nine minus one is an eight. And an adjusted die roll of my I was just checking to see if the uh, if there was going to be any death check for Edward here, but it has to be a nine. At a minus one, it's an eight on the adjusted die roll. So it is lucky, but an eight on an adjusted die roll for a disordered unit is eliminated. So the English have suffered more losses here. This disordered unit is removed from the battle. They are wiped out. Edward of York will shuffle over here to be in command of the longbows now. And that adds some points to the English, uh, to the English flight point track here. The loss of a men at arms at this battle for the English is a whopping four points to the flight point track. So that makes it five. So the French are only an additional nine points away from claiming victory in this battle and another big hole punched in the English line here by the French archers. We're going to, uh, building on that momentum, this next battle of archers is going to try to take a shot at the longbows. Now, the, this is not, again, an advantageous attack here for them. At range two, they get a zero and they are disordered, so it is a minus one. A zero minus one has no effect. The longbows, however, get a chance to return fire. At a range of two, they're plus one, firing straight up at the longbows there. Plus one on this attack. Seven plus one is an eight. They are already disordered, which means they are eliminated. So the French lose two more points, giving them a total now of 11 flight point totals. And the English are at five still. We have one last French archer to move. I feel like these shots, the longbow, are just asking for trouble. They don't seem all that intelligent. We're going to have these archers just run away, perhaps try to sneak back up in here and maybe get a shot at some of these men at arms rather than try to mess with these longbows. I think this is kind of a lesson learned. So they can only move one because this is uphill, so that burns them out there. So they are done. The French archers, therefore, are done with their turn. We will now see if the French can continue their activation. And the question is, which battle should we activate? Debating whether to bring the... Uh, Jean's battle here into action, but I think if we activate Charles's battle, we can rally some of these troops that are already disordered and perhaps still get a couple more attacks off here. There's still quite a bit of left of energy, a little um, energy left here in Charles's battle. So we're going to have them try to activate. His activation rating is a three. We add one to the die roll, so we need a zero, one, or two to continue the activation. Four doesn't work, so the English will take their activation, a badly needed chance for the English. 
I think this is a good place for us to pause here as we shift to the English activation. We will be back in the next episode with the continuation of the battle. So the English line with the big hole punched in it here, a dent here, and some threatening French units on the west side. The English, however, have a big activation to try to change the tide of battle here. Maybe we probably should activate Henry's battle and see if these longbows can knock out these units here. Perhaps shore up the front line again. Lots of decisions to be made, but it definitely could still go either way. With the English at five flight points, they only need nine more. That's not so many more units before the F French can claim victory. French are at 11. However, with a couple of good activations from the longbows, the English could perhaps take out these archers, take out these men-at-arms, and that would get the French a lot closer to defeat. I think this one's still very much up in the air. Um, if you've enjoyed this, uh, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, please consider subscribing. Should be back in about three days with the next segment. Sorry, this one took a little bit long. Just kind of a bunch of extraneous circumstances and other things have led this one to being a little bit delayed. But thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you in episode three.